Madam President, members, uh, Senator Hancock uh, is the woman that sits in front of me, and on the, on the Public Safety Budget Subcommittee, she's the woman that sits beside me. So, as such, I have some special things I'd like to say about our great Senator Lonnie Hancock. Now, Lonnie Hancock, members, Lonnie Hancock um, has an unusual distinction in that both Lonnie Hancock and her husband, Tom Bates, both served in the state legislature. And they also both served as mayor of the city of Berkeley. So we had a, uh, partnership, a political partnership, a political powerhouse, uh, a couple, a political a team in the city of Berkeley. Uh, when um, Tom served as Human Services Committee chair, and then I came into the assembly, everybody said, well, you have to take the Bates Committee. And I said, what's that? And he said, they said, uh, well, that's the Human Service Committee, and you have to work with Senator, or Lon you have to work with Lonnie Hancock. And um, I said, okay, I'll work with Lonnie. So since then, nine years ago, we've been working on criminal justice reform. Lonnie and I have been a partner on criminal justice reform. And I'll tell you what, Lonnie reaches across the aisle for criminal justice reform because what she does is she believes that reducing crime by reducing the underlying causes. That's the fundamental Hancock principle. Reducing crime by reducing the underlying causes. And they include things like racism and discrimination, education, lack of education, uh, helping dropouts, jobs and tr jobs training, career technical education, Better health care, mental health, and substance abuse programs in social justice, of course. And what we found was everything she said was correct. It, it really works. And I think her legacy of legislation uh, has had a great impact on those underlying causes. And we ought to continue that effort in a bipartisan fashion because we all know that it's most uh, morally correct, and I would say fiscally correct at the same time. Lonnie's also known for her great work on election reform. Election reform in terms of making elections more democratic, transparent, uh, clean money, and all the elections uh, legislation she does has made a great benefit to the state of California. Now, I think the thing, uh, uh, that I enjoyed the most uh, with Lonnie is we talk a lot about it in the committee, but then we actually walk the talk and we go on prison tours. So Lonnie and I have been to prison together quite a bit. Uh, I think we've been to uh, Norco, let's see, Norco, Ione. Um, we went to the Central California Women's uh, Prison and other facilities uh, where people are incarcerated in the state of California. We also went to psychiatric hospitals together, other kinds of facilities like that. Um, I sort of, I sort of uh, follow behind Lonnie and listen to her questions because she had a special way of talking to people and listening to people in the, the uh, penal institutions of California uh, especially uh, when we went to the women's prison where she got down to the nitty gritty about what kind of problems and issues were, were in those facilities. And of course, subsequent legislation that she introduced on um, making those facilities better places. Uh, she also um, talked to our correctional uh, staff and asked very pointed questions. But, um, Recently, as the chair of the Transportation Committee, I had a little thing going with Lonnie here when she came into the committee meeting 
and she, dis she decided she was going to introduce four pieces of legislation that dealt with the quote-unquote coal train to uh, Oakland. And the coal train was a train coming from Utah going into Oakland. And Lonnie definitely didn't like that train. So what she did is she introduced one, two, three, four pieces of legislation uh, regarding that train. I said, Lonnie, are you just trying to stop that train? And she said, yes, I am. I'm trying to stop that train. And, I, and, I, and you know what happened? Just last week, they announced they're not going to do the train because uh, the train is now stopped. They're not going to do the coal train to Oakland. So uh, congratulations, Senator Hancock. We have no train instead of a coal train. Um, I, I want to say that Lonnie's legacy is indeed uh, all those issues and her grasp of those issues and her working across the aisle and with all her colleagues. Um, so I want to congratulate the great Senator from Berkeley has a wonderful career in public service ranging from the local government. She worked with uh, President Carter, President Clinton in the administration, and uh, of course in the California legislature. So congratulations to Senator Lonnie Hancock, the great senator from the city of Berkeley. And she'll do a great job in the future working for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Anderson. Senators, I have uh, good news and bad news. I've got a lot of great stories about our, our good friend from Oakland. She corrected me once, I said Berkeley, she told me it was Oakland. But she told other members it was Berkeley, I'm just saying. Uh, the bad news is it'll take us past midnight. So, but uh, that joke didn't go very well. But <laughs> let me just say this, <laughs> we're, we're way too tired. Uh, I started in the legislature and, and uh, Lonnie was in the assembly with me for a short period of time, and, and uh, if I remember accurately, I think I voted against every one of her bills. And look at us now, we join author bills all the time together. When you serve on a committee with Lonnie, her idea of a fun date is to take you out to a prison and make you spend the day <laughs> speaking to convicts and learning something about prison reform. And Lonnie, I'm grateful for that. Thank you so much, because you opened my eyes to a lot a reform that uh, I didn't think was possible. But having served with you and sitting through every one of those committees, and I just want to, uh, I'm going to plug my own horn here for a second. Uh, I sat through every one of those committees with you. I never left you alone. That while <laughs> other members came in and went out because they had other committees, I was always there by your side, and I never missed any of that testimony. And that testimony was riveting. And I think that uh, when I reflect on our time together, I think about all the things that we were able to accomplish together, but most importantly, your focus for reform. And you know, many times you're in these committees and Republicans and Democrats don't get alike because we think about these things slightly differently. And one day I said to Lonnie, I said, you know, I wanna support some of this stuff, but no one's ever held accountable. When they fail to do what we ask them to do, no one ever has a follow-up hearing. No one ever says that you got to do your job. You can't just take our money and do what you please, but you've got to implement it in the way that we set forth with the policies we passed in law. And Lonnie, you held a lot of people accountable uh, for a long time. And while we were fighting a, a culture, you never gave up and you always held them accountable. And I, and I, I want to say how much I appreciate the partnership that you and I shared. One day I came to Lonnie, I said, Lonnie, I'm so tired of addressing public safety issues after they occur. I said, there's an epidemic of opioid abuse on the horizon. And this is, uh, I think it was six years ago. And I said, I'd really like to have a hearing on this. And she said, well, why don't you put the speakers together? Why don't you go through this and, pr and bring it back to us? So how many Republicans get to have a hearing on anything ever? And yet Lonnie let me take the lead on it and bring in the speakers, work with her staff and our, our staffs together to make sure that we were bringing in all walks of life to look at every aspect of the issue and try to get ahead of it. Not many people have a partnership like that. 
And Lonnie, I just tell you how much I appreciate it. And I am so disappointed to have you leave because we have so much more good work ahead of us. And while other members came and left that committee, you and I were the two stalwarts that were on it the longest together. And I, I just so appreciate your openness to listen to all viewpoints, even Republican viewpoints, and act on them when they were good ideas. So for that, thank you so much. I'm gonna miss you greatly, but I think I gave you a, a list of good restaurants in San Diego, so when you come down there, we'll visit them together, you with your husband and me with my wife. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Monning. Thank you, Madam President. I have a quick announcement. That is EQ has completed, and so now uh, the next committee scheduled will be Energy Utilities Communications Committee in room 3191. And I would also like to add um, my thoughts and thanks and accolades to our colleague Lonnie Hancock. I knew Lonnie before she knew me. I was a student at Berkeley and walked precincts in support of Lonnie Hancock when she was running for city council for the first time. And it was my first precinct walking, uh, knocking door to door for candidate, city council candidate Lonnie Hancock. And of course, got to know her at that point um, in terms of what she stood for in rising in local politics, and then of course have followed her distinguished career uh, in the legislature, uh, in the assembly, and the Senate. Uh, prior colleagues have commented on Lonnie's leadership in criminal justice reform. I just wanna say part of my early work in criminal justice reform started when I was a student at Berkeley, and there was a, a I don't even know if it was a renewed focus. It was a focus on prison conditions and on the failure of our criminal justice system to engage in true rehabilitation. And it's been some 40 plus years since those earlier efforts at prison reform. And I would say just in my short tenure of eight years in the legislature, I've watched Lonnie and colleagues and public safety committee and and communities work to move a ship and change its course with input from all stakeholders, uh, law enforcement, uh, ACLU, criminal justice reform advocates, and create a growing consensus of the need to work together to build a rehabilitation system, a system where a person can have the hope of job training, access to the arts, education, uh, and a pathway to reconnecting as a contributing member of society. That's our shared goal. It's a bipartisan goal. Lonnie Hancock, you've helped create the path for people to join and be pushing for the first time in decades, really, in the same direction. So thank you for that. Thank you for your years of leadership and public service and contributions on so many other issues uh, and the partnership you formed with the current mayor of Berkeley, uh, also a former colleague here in the legislature, definitely a, a dynamic duo committed to public service. Wish you all the best in the next chapters. Thank you. Senator Lara. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, I also want to just say a few words about uh, Lonnie Hancock. You know, members, growing up in, in a low-income area that's been, you know, riddled with crime, you often kind of lose perspective of, you know, the, the institutional racism that exists in, in our society that creates these, these you know, problems in, in certain communities. And so, you know, when I came up here, uh, you know, I didn't really understand our public safety issues or the issues dealing with incarcerated youth or folks that definitely deserve a second chance at life. You know, we grew up as not wanting to be like those individuals and wanting to shun from them and not, you know, and, and pretty much just essentially put them in jail. And then I met the amazing Lonnie Hancock who really took time to educate me on, on the issues of not only public safety, criminal justice issues, 
that really transformed my point of view of who really are the individuals in these institutions and the circumstances that they often find themselves in uh, and that it is just so easy for us to incarcerate these folks and just forget about them. I think, you know, we're gonna lose a tremendous, tremendous leader and someone who I spent many hours with as a budget conferee, uh, countless hours, but you know, one thing that I learned about Lonnie is she's never gonna leverage you for something. Uh, she's always gonna be on the right side. Uh, everything that is good, and society, everything that she fights for just makes her such an amazing champion. Uh, she truly is the senator from Berkeley, uh, and, and Berkeley is going to lose a tremendous champion. And I just want to thank you, Lonnie, for educating me on these important issues, uh, passing the torch on a lot of the work that I've been doing this year. Uh, and I just want to thank you for believing in those folks from my district and in my community, believing that they deserve a second chance, believing that there's circumstances beyond our control that sometimes leads people to make bad decisions, but that doesn't mean that we forget about them. And so I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for fighting for my constituents that often find themselves in, in situations where you know society has put them in and so i just want to thank you again for your tremendous leadership it's a tremendous loss for our senate to have you leave us thank you thank you senator allen followed by senator Wynn, and then lastly her seatmate senator lou senator allen i know the hour is late i just wanted to mention one other topic that hasn't been raised in connection to senator hancock we've talked a lot about her courageous championing of the disadvantage particularly as it deals with the question of, of uh, a criminal justice reform and her role as chair of the Public Safety Committee. Uh, I also, I serve with Senator Hancock on the Elections and Constitutional Amendments Committee, and she has been an absolute champion in the, com in the conversation relating to the role of money in politics. And she had a huge role to play in the bill that we just passed out of this floor today, SB 1107, uh, which will, that, that, that deals with the question of of public campaign financing. Uh, she pushed for the hearing out of which the bill came, and she's passionate about this issue. She's passionate about trying to make our political system more responsive, more transparent, more accountable. And I wanted to acknowledge her, her, her tireless efforts in that area as well. It's been a lifelong passion for her, and I think merits our, our praise. Senator Wynn. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Senator Hancock, I, um, I want to thank you. This year I had two bills in front of you. You were so gracious to me and, and I really appreciated your staff. Uh, it, that one was a very difficult vote, um, but we worked together and we came up with a good compromise, the body dumping bill. And then the bail bond. If in the tenure that I am here left, if I can ever get that bail bond, the way that you and I, and we, I believe we actually almost agree on that issue, I will always call it the Hancock bill. Um, you know, it, it, um, you know, when we walked out, I didn't think that we would um, have a bill or an idea that we could agree on, but um, you have really helped us and, and I really appreciate it. And on another note, I know we don't necessarily agree on when it comes to the government of Vietnam, but I saw your vote, I saw you laid off, and then cast a silent vote. Thank you. That meant a lot, um, because it meant a lot for a lot of us. But for someone from your air, someone who knew what happened in this country, and your friends who had to go through with it, and when you did that last, yesterday, I noticed it, and I greatly appreciate it, um, because it shows how, although we can disagree, but we can be so respectful to each other because of a different background. Um, so best of luck and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity in the last year and a half to be able to work alongside you and to also be able to uh, call you a colleague. And Senator Liu. Thank you very much, Madam President. 
I just have a few words to say um, about my seatmate, who I've enjoyed um, company for the past two terms. And um, Lonnie is a policy wonk. She is a problem solver. She goes to all kinds of depth trying to figure it out. And she's inclusive, hearing many voices, trying to bring people together to solve our problems. I sit on uh, public safety with her. And just to give you a, a brief example about how we work together, she insisted that uh, there are other ways, other countries that deal with drug abuse. So we went to Portugal to take a look at it. Just other ways to do rehabilitation. So we went to Scandinavian countries, we went to Norway and went into a, a secure, high security prison and took, took a look at what was happening there. These kinds of in-depth, personal experiences that come back and um, massage and work toward making a more humane system for ourselves speaks to our humanity. And um, Lonnie is all about that. And I'm very, very um, pleased that she also sat on my education committee. And I feel like we were co-conspirators co because it's so important, that tie between education and who winds up in our prison system is, is uh, pretty well linked together. So I love this lady, and uh, we've had a great time together. We've traveled together. We uh, uh, shared many glasses of wine together. <laughs> <laughs> and we've um, done lots of thinking together. And um, I do appreciate your work. And you know, one of the big things she did for all of us if you remember, we used to have two-thirds majority on budget votes. Remember that? Since Prop 25, this young lady over here did that for us, and it passed. And so now our budgets are majority vote budgets. And we don't have the kind of rancor we used to have when I first uh, and she first started here. So those kinds of things, um, low-key, Steady, 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 steady movement. She really um, is a problem solver, and California has benefited from her devotion to all of us. So thank you, Lonnie. And Senator Hancock. Senator Hancock, before you start, please. Senator Be Bates. Yes. Senator Bates, you wanted to say something to Senator Hancock? I did. I did. And actually, it probably is for all the ladies that were here when I arrived in the assembly, and they didn't look at me as Pat Bates with an R by my name. They looked at me as another woman colleague who'd come to the floor to represent probably what's most important to us who come from local government, the quality of life in our communities for our kids and our family. But in particular with uh, Ms. Hancock, uh, I just want to applaud you for being one of those who believe that sentence enhancements can be effective in certain cases. Uh, against what uh, 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 Senator Hancock has had to manage over the, her term uh, this year in public safety as our great chair. Uh, she had to move two of my bills, both sentence enhancements that didn't go much farther, uh, fellows, but uh, she really gave it uh, her thumbs up. And they were very important because they do affect our children, our families, our women. And I thank you so much, uh, oh, Senator Hancock, because I know that was a very, very heavy lift for you. And for all the ladies that have been honored before, I didn't stand up. I was kind of waiting to do a, a closer because you treated me so well that I did want to come back. Because people said, why do you want to go back there? And I said, there's a great group of women who are fighting for all the things that mean so much to all of us in our communities. So thank you all. It's been a great ride. Thank you. And Senator Hancock. Thank, thank you very much, Madam President. And thank all of you. Those of you who've been um, sometimes Senator Bell, Senator Anderson, and I refer to each other as partners in crime. But those that have worked 
uh, to make a criminal justice system that rehabilitates and sends the 90% of the people that will return to their communities. We want them to go back as safe neighbors. <laughs> and that is what we have truly tried to do, working together in many, many ways. And it's been not only on that issue, but on the human service issues, the education issues, where I sit with Senator Liu, the environmental issues. I really, I may say this later too, I came here hoping to be able to help save the planet. I found out Senator Fran Pavley got there two years before me and had started the process. Um, but we, there are so many incredible issues for us to work on and it has been a privilege and a joy to work with every one of you because as other people have said tonight, everybody brings a slightly different perspective. Some people you agree with almost all the time, some people you don't agree with too often, but they teach you something in thinking through where they're coming from. So it's been wonderful. I want to thank all of you, but I have to tell you, I really want to thank my staff. My staff is a group of wonderful people. Many of them have been with me since the very beginning of my time here. And their support and their intellect, their drive, their capacity to take the impossible and make it inevitable has really been uh, just beyond wonderful to work with. So I want to thank them. The public safety staff of the Senate is brilliant. These are lawyers who've devoted their lives to issues, and they're very good. As Senator Leno knows from his time chairing the committee, of pointing out slightly more tactful ways to say things so that more people can hear you. And uh, it's, so they've been wonderful. The entire Senate staff has been just terrific. And so what can I say? It's the end of an era. We see a lot of corners that have to be turned. We haven't quite turned those corners yet, whether it's on the environment or changing the culture of our correctional institutions. Um, but we do see the corners that must be turned, and that's something. And I want to thank the pro tem for his leadership and help on so many of these things. And again, every one of you wonderful people, keep on. There's a lot to do, a lot to learn, and, I'll, and it's an exhilarating and privileged work to do. So thank you.